Hello everyone and welcome back to Picky Board Gamer. My name is Hector Rakos and in today's video I will explain how you can play the game Flamecraft. The game is designed by Manny Vega and produced by Lucky Duck Games. It's a 2 to 5 players game but also can be played as solo and takes about 60 minutes to finish. The game is about dragons working in shops of a town and has beautiful artwork by Sandara Tang. Let's move to the table and see how the game is played. In the game, players take the role of flame keepers, able to conversate with dragons. Players will be trying to help dragons as well as shop owners in an attempt to increase their reputation. Players alternate turns and they begin their turn by visiting one of the available shops around the map, paying a penalty if the selected shop is also being visited by other players. After visiting the shop, players have two options. Either gather goods from that shop and also fire up an ability from one of the dragons visiting that shop, or spend resources to enchant the shop and gain reputation points, and also fire up the abilities of all the dragons in that shop. When the game ends, players will gain additional reputation points by satisfying secret objectives in their fancy dragon cards. The player with the most reputation points will be known as the most successful flamekeeper in town and will win in a game of flamecraft. Begin setup by unrolling the town mat in the middle of the table. Create supplies with the resources of the game. There are six different types of goods and coins which are not regarded as goods. All resources are regarded to be unlimited, so if you ever come in short in one of the resources, find a suitable replacement. You can also place the coin supply in the fountain area of the mat. The town depicts 12 shop slots for one or two player games, but in a three or a four players game, two more slots are added to the left for a total of 14 slots. Then take the six starter shops and place them facing upwards in the spaces I show you around the mat. Which shop goes in which of these spaces is completely relevant. In their top left corner, all starter shops depict a different good icon. And in their bottom part, they have three dragon slots. Then find the six starter dragons. Starter dragons also depict a different good type in their top left corner. Place each starter dragon to their corresponding shop according to their icon, placing them in the leftmost dragon slot of the card, which depicts this starter dragon icon. Then separate the normal shops according to the good depicted in their top left corner. This will make you six different piles. You'll be left with some more shop cards not depicting a good in their top left corner. All of these will be placed in the seventh pile. After you do that, shuffle all piles separately and then draw one card from each good pile and four cards from the seventh pile without looking at them. Remaining shop cards are not used and will return in the box. Shuffle the selected 10 shop cards and place them in the right side of the mat. This will be your shop deck. Next, take the deck of the Artisan Dragons and remember to remove from the game 12 cards if this is a 2 players game or 8 cards if this is a 3 players game. Place the remaining dragon cards in the indicated space on the mat, facing downwards and then draw the top 5 cards placing them in the park facing upwards. Next, shuffle the fancy dragon set and place it facing downwards on the dedicated space on the mat which depicts the fancy dragon icon. Next, separate enchantment cards, creating a golden and a purple pile. You will only use one of these piles in your game, and it is suggested that you use the purple pile for your first games. Shuffle the selected pile and place it facing downwards in the indicated space on the map which depicts the enchantment icon. Then draw the top 5 cards from this deck and place them facing upwards in the 5 dedicated spaces on the left. Each player selects one of the colors and takes the player token, the player raid and the reputation marker of the selected color. Then all players will be dealt with three artisan dragons and two fancy dragons. Players will keep all artisan dragons but they have to select one of the fancy dragons and return the other one in the bottom of the deck. Your artisan and fancy dragon cards are secret from other players but the number of cards you have for each type is common knowledge. 
At this point, use any random way to determine a first player and the rest of the player turn order is determined clockwise. If there are four or five players in the game, the fourth and the fifth player only will take one good of their choice from the supply. If you want to play the game with the optional rule of companions, then randomly deal one of these cards to each player, which is placed facing upwards near the player's play area. Remaining companion cards are removed from the game. Finally, all players place their reputation marker right next to the reputation track, using this side not depicting 50 points. The game is now ready to start. You're just one click away from supporting this channel by subscribing. If you like our videos and haven't done already, I would really, really appreciate if you did, as this will help the channel grow and enable me to produce more such videos. Starting with the first player and continuing in a clockwise manner, players alternate turns until the end of the game is triggered. All players have a player raid which describes everything you can do during your turn. At the beginning of your turn, you must visit a shop. You visit a shop by placing your marker onto any shop around the board. However, starting with your second turn, you will always have to visit a different shop. You cannot remain in the same one. If the shop you visit is already occupied by other players, you must pay each one of these players with either a good of your choice from your supply or one of your coins. Take note that each coin at the end of the game will worth one reputation, which is victory points in Flamecraft. The opponents will place these resources in their personal supplies. After visiting the shop, you now have two options, either to gather resources from that shop or enchant the shop, each of the options involves several steps that have to be followed in the specific order as written in your player aid. Let's start with gather. When you gather, you first collect resources. You get what's depicted in the top left corner of the shop, goods depicted in the top left corner of the dragons in that shop, and also goods depicted in the top left corner of enchantment cards, if any, in that shop. We will see how these are placed in shops later on. Some shop cards might depict something different than a good. With this one, for example, the player gains any good from the supply. With this here, the player gains the indicated number of coins. With this bonus, the player gains one dragon card, either from the ones that are in the park or the top one from the face down stack. Important, if you take a card from the park, this space will not be replenished until the end of your turn. After collecting the resources, if there are any empty dragon slots in that shop, the player may play one of their dragons in their hand and gain rewards. The player can play any dragon card to fill a slot, but the dragon must depict a good which is also depicted here in that slot, so if I had these two cards, only this one is eligible to be placed here. After placing the card, the player also collects the bonus depicted in the right side of the slot. So in this case, the player gains two reputation by moving their marker forward. Very important, whenever during your turn you fill the last space of a shop like it happened now, then you immediately take the top shop card from the deck and without looking at it, you place it facing downwards into any empty shop space in town and then you continue with your turn. If there is no empty space left, then you ignore filling a shop. Then the player may fire up the ability of any dragon in that shop, even the one just placed by the player. All dragon cards of the same type share the same power. I will explain all six powers right after I complete the gather action explanation. As a last step when you gather, if the shop card has any ability, then the player may use it. This one says give any park dragon their matching good for one reputation each, and if you satisfy all five of them, you also gain one coin. Important, if there are no all five dragons in the park when you perform this ability, then you cannot go for the coin. Also, these goods will remain on these dragons, and when a player acquires them, they will also gain all goods on top of these cards. 
Now let's see the six dragon abilities in detail. With Bread Dragon's ability, you gain another dragon card in the same way we explained before. You either get one from the park or the top one from the deck. With Diamond Dragons, you gain any three different goods from the supply. Leaf Dragon's ability is to gift another player one good and gain two reputation. Many effects in this game enable you to gift things to another player. The things you gift must come from your personal supply and the benefit comes always from the general supply. In this case, you just forward your reputation marker to spaces. Also remember that when you're gifting goods, you can also use your coins. Anvil Dragons enable you to gain two same goods that are supplied either from dragon cards in that shop or from the shop itself. So in this situation, my options are to take two anvils or two meat. In a situation with such a shop, the player chooses one of the goods and takes two pieces of that same good. The Meat Dragon's ability enables the player to place another dragon from their hand anywhere in town. So you place the card and gain the bonuses of that placement, provided that the card is eligible to be placed there according to the slot's requirements. Finally, the power of the Potion Dragon is to select any dragon in town and swap places with the Potion Dragon. Then you fire up the power of the selected dragon that came into the shop. Important, for this swap, no slot requirements are applied and of course you gain no placement bonuses for any of the two cards. Now let's explain the option of enchanting a shop. After visiting a shop, instead of gathering goods, you can instead enchant the shop. To enchant the shop, you must select a face-up enchantment card of which the good in the top left corner matches the good in the top left corner of the shop you're at. So in our example, the only eligible enchantment card is that one here. The empty enchantment card slot is not replenished at the moment. Then the player must spend all goods depicted in the enchantment cards back to the supply. Players can also use their coins if they are missing any of the goods, unless the enchantment card depicts this symbol. After the cost is met, the player gains all bonuses depicted in the bottom left corner of the enchantment card and then the card is placed right beneath the shop card, like that. After enchanting the shop, the player then fires up the powers of all dragons in that shop. The player performs these powers in any order, and if because of these powers another dragon is added into that shop, then the power of this dragon is also fired up. Some enchantment cards have this type of benefit which works a bit differently. These cards work with sets of the depicted goods. If I only spend one set, then I gain no benefit. However, I can still play that card and enchant it to a shop. If I spend the second set, I gain two reputation, and this can go up to eight reputation by spending four sets. Important, a shop can only be enchanted up to three times. If a shop has three enchantment cards attached, then it cannot be enchanted anymore. Also, shop cards that depict this icon can be enchanted with any type of enchantment cards, but still no more than three times. Finally, shop cards that depict these type of icons cannot be enchanted at all. After you have gathered or enchanted the visited shop, you end your turn performing the following steps. If there is any face-down shop in town, you flip it over and that shop is now available. If there are less than 5 artisan dragons in the park, you reveal cards from the deck, so you have 5 again. And if there are less than 5 face-up enchantment cards, you reveal cards from the enchantment deck, so you have 5 enchantments facing upwards. If there are not enough cards in the decks, you draw as much as you can. Then you must apply personal limits. If you have more than six artisan dragons, you return the excess ones to the bottom of the corresponding pile. Also, you can never have more than seven goods of one type. If you do so, return the excess ones back to their supplies. There is no limit for fancy dragons or coins. Rewards like this one here enable players to gain one artisan dragon card. 
All fancy dragon cards depict a goal. If you meet this goal, you will gain a one-time bonus or effect, which usually is gaining reputation points. In the top right corner of fancy dragon cards, you see either a sun icon or a moon icon. Sun fancy dragons can only be activated during the game during one of your turns. So if during my turn one of the shops has three dragons of the same type, I may activate this card and gain six reputation points. After you activate a sun card, you place it facing upwards near your play area. On the other hand, moon cards remain facing downwards in your play area until the end of the game. If you play the game with the addition of companion cards, then you have a card which indicates an ability that can be used only once during the game and also a start of game bonus. This ability means that once when you enchant a shop, you may pay with anvils in place of any goods, so I could pay the cost of this enchantment even with 5 anvils. Also, at the start of the game, the player reserves one enchantment card. When you reserve an enchantment, you take any face-up enchantment and place it next to your play area facing upwards. Now you are the only player that can use this enchantment card when enchanting a shop. Remember that if you have a reserved enchantment, you cannot reserve another one. Once the ability on your companion card is used, you flip the card facing downwards. If the supply of artisan dragons or enchantments ever depletes, the end of the game is triggered. When that happens, all players take a final turn, including the player who triggered the end. In scoring, players add to their score one reputation point for every coin they have left in their supply. Players also add reputation points from their knight fancy dragons, if applicable. The player with the most reputation points wins the game. In case of a tie, the winner is the tied player who has the most artisan dragons still in their supply, and if there is still a tie, then the winner is the one who has the most remaining goods. After that, all tied players share their victory. And that were the rules of Flamecraft. If you like our videos and want to see more, don't forget to subscribe, and until next time, have fun and play more board games.